Hey guys, so today I'm filming my Hit It or Quit It thoughts on hauls number 12. If you have never seen this series from me before, basically I am reviewing the products that I featured in a haul video and letting you know my thoughts on them. A lot of times you don't hear about products that were mentioned in haul videos unless they are featured in a favorites or an empty. So I really love this series because I am able to review everything for you guys. And my inspiration for this series was it's Kirsten and her series of what I thought on stuff I bought. I will have her channel and her playlist linked in the description box. Make sure you go check her out. I absolutely love watching those videos from her. So I will have my original haul video linked down below. It was from last August, which was my birthday month. So I do have quite a few products and I will list and link all of the items in the description box as well. So check the description box for a ton of information. So let's just get started with the products because I have quite a few. So for I had picked up the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus Foundation in the shade number 20. So this foundation gives me about a medium coverage, but it is buildable. I am wearing it on my face today. It really does depend on what you apply it with. Number 20 is the second lightest shade in the range, and it has a beige undertone. And I wish it had a yellow undertone. I am still able to make the beige undertone work for me, but the color match isn't perfect. I do like this foundation. I find that it does a decent job of controlling my oil. I have yet to find a miracle worker to combat my oily skin, but I will definitely be finishing this up, but I don't think I will repurchase it. I much prefer my Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation. Then I had purchased two of the Formula X nail polish. I'm assuming that these were part of a limited edition collection. So the first shade I have is Alive, which is a beautiful milky peach shade. I believe this one takes three coats to be opaque. This is one of my Holy Grail nail polish. And the other one I have is Dynamic, which is this gray. I don't have any other gray in my collection, and this is quite unique to me for that reason. Um, I think I've worn it once, and I liked it okay. I feel like it looked a little bit too much like concrete on my nails, but we will see when I try it again. And I was excited to try out this formula for the first time and was really impressed by it. And then moving on to some things I got from Ulta. The first two were some Anastasia brow products. I purchased the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Ash Blonde. And I absolutely love this pencil. It does a great job of drawing onto brow hair and onto skin. That is a bit more of an expensive pencil. And since I have found the NYX Micro Brow, I probably will be repurchasing that most often. But if I am able to get a 20% off coupon from Alta, I'll probably be repurchasing the Anastasia Brow with. The other product from Anastasia is their Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Taupe. This is the perfect cool tone for my brows, but this is a bit dark as you can see. It gives me a more dramatic look, which I do like on occasion. This is not a product I use every day. The next thing I had purchased was the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. I'm sure you guys all know what this looks like. We have 12 beautiful rosy undertone shadows and I have to say I have definitely not used this as much as I should. The colors are beautiful. I especially love Limit and Nooner which are the two matte shades. I don't use any of my Naked palettes enough, honestly. I know the Urban Decay Naked Smoky is coming out. I'm definitely not buying that because I know I'm not gonna use it. The formula of Urban Decay shadows are really good. They're very pigmented and blendable. They're not my all-time favorite shadow formula, but I do really enjoy them, so I need to rock this more. I do have a tutorial using this, which I will link up here for you guys, but yeah, I don't use it enough. I'm happy to have it. Would I purchase it all over again if I had the chance? No, I wouldn't because I just don't use it enough. So please let me know your favorite color combinations using this palette in a comment down below. And then I purchased my very first one and only Too Faced La Creme lipstick. And this is in the shade Country Star, which was a limited edition shade, which came out with the Country palette. So this is what it looks like. It is a beautiful, neutral, peachy shade. And this is very, very moisturizing. It doesn't last long on the lips at all. I did hear from a couple people that this particular shade had less lasting power than their regular line. So I'm happy to hear that because I do love this color, but because the formula doesn't last that long, I don't think it's worth the money. I'm not someone that really will invest in a high-end lipstick and find it to be worth it because drugstore lipsticks perform so well, but I love the luxurious packaging. I do think it feels very comfortable and moisturizing on my lips and I do like the shade, so I am happy to have it, but it is not a must-have for me. So the last product I purchased from Ulta was an OPI nail polish, which came out last year on August 6th, which was my birthday, and this 
was from the Nordic collection and this is in the shade my dog sled is a hybrid and this is a very bright mint shade I absolutely love this it has an incredible formula one of my holy grail polishes as well so I believe the entire Nordic collection was made permanent at Ulta because I have still seen it on the display so definitely go to your Ulta and pick up this polish if you haven't yet so then I have a couple products from Maybelline I believe Rite Aid had Maybelline for 40% off during this time so I picked up some old faithfuls and I picked up some new things to try as well so the first thing I had was the Maybelline instant age rewind dark circle eraser concealer and this is in the neutralizer shade which is the yellow tone and this yellow does not work for me it actually matches my skin tone and is a little bit deeper so it does not highlight whatsoever so I much prefer the brightener shade which is the pink undertone to highlight it is my favorite highlighting product and I love the sponge on here I know some people are grossed out by it I think it perfectly applies the product and then I just blend it out with my Real Techniques beauty sponge. Next I had picked up one of the Maybelline Color Tattoo Leathers in the shade Deep Forest. I think I've used this once. For some reason this leather collection which are four mattes and one satin shade, the mattes are super patchy. Like I have the hardest time applying them evenly. So this is not something I would wear on its own. I think the color is pretty. I've only used it once so I need to find and I look to use with this base but I do not recommend the leather collection except for creamy beige that is a beautiful tan color that is not patchy but the rest of them are the next eye product that I had picked up from Maybelline was the Maybelline Eye Studio Plush Silk Quad in the shade Copper Chic. I had also picked up the Taupe Tentress, but some of the shades were really kind of chunky, so I returned it. But I did keep Copper Chic, which is the best quad. These are four intense metallic rose gold copper shades that is so beautiful for the fall. I think I have a get rid of me using this product I will link for you guys. I love the formula of this. It is an incredible shade. So definitely recommend you guys check out the Maybelline Eye Studio Quads. I would recommend that you have a matte transition shade or brow bone shade because these are four straight metallic shades. My next product was a repurchase. That is my Maybelline Line Stiletto Liquid Liner. You guys know I'm obsessed with this. It has a felt tip applicator. The Applicator is not too long, not too short, not too flimsy, not too stiff, not too skinny, and not too fat. I think it is perfect. I do have to say that I think Maybelline may have changed the formula because the ones I've been purchasing recently seem to not be as black and a little bit more on the thin side, which I don't like whatsoever. And that's happened to me like the past three or four times that I'm buying them. So I don't think it was a bad batch. I think Maybelline may have tampered with this formula, which pisses me off because this is my holy real liquid liner so um let me know if you've had that experience with this liner i'm gonna keep buying it and hopefully i will come back to the amazing formula that once was that maybelline line stiletto liquid liner the last two things i had purchased were two mascaras the maybelline colossal cat eyes and the maybelline falsies original these are some of my holy grail mascaras these are definitely in my top three they both have a natural bristle brush this is what the Colossal Cat Eyes look like. It has a nice scoop to it, which I think really helps to hug my lashes and pull them up. This mascara gives them really nice length. Then we have the Maybelline Falsies, which has a slight scoop to it, as you can see. But I think this really nicely fans out my lashes and thickens them to give really nice volume. So I love to pair these together. This one for length, this one for volume. I will absolutely repurchase these and would definitely recommend them to you guys. So then I purchased some things from Milani. The first is the Milani Brow Shaping Clear Gel. I really love this. It has a really nice small brush to apply the product to your brows without getting all over your face. I think that this helps hold my brows in place without making them crunchy. I do like the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel better, but for the price, I think that this one is incredible it only lasts me about three months because you don't get that much product in here but I definitely do love the formula and would recommend this if you are looking for a clear brow gel then I purchased two of the Milani Bella eyes eyeshadows I do have a review on these that I will link for you guys and the first one I had purchased was number three Bella cappuccino which is a satin matte finish and I'm not sure if you can tell but I have hit pan right here it actually is just like 
a plate under there so it isn't like silver pan but I have hit pan on the shadow this is a great neutral undertone it definitely can look a little bit more cool depending on what you pair it with but I love this as a transition shade this is pigmented but it isn't like a deep shade so it is perfect for a transition for my skin tone and maybe even a little bit darker um, I am a fair skin tone but if you are a light or light medium I think that would be a nice transition color the other shade I purchased was number 27 Bella Mandarin which is also a satin matte and this one I have used but not as much this is a really nice mandarin orange shade this is really pretty in the crease or as a blown out transition shade as well so I would just Describe the Milani Bella Eyes eyeshadows as wearable colors for the everyday woman because they do have a ton of neutrals in their line but they do have colorful shades like this Bella Mandarin but they don't look like colors from the Urban Decay Electric palette they aren't super neon these are very pigmented but they're more on the lighter side I know a lot of people kind of hate on these shadows because the colors aren't as intense but that can be the appeal for some people like I said perfect wearable colors for the everyday woman. Then I picked up two of the Milani Color Statement nail polishes. I have the Bombshell, which is pink and corrupted coral. I do like these polishes. The packaging is so adorable. Definitely love this corrupted coral shade the most. They do have a nice extensive shade range, but they are shades that I already own from other brands. But if you were just starting to grow your nail polish collection and you want to pick out like great, basic, everybody must have colors from a drugstore brand, I would definitely recommend these Milani color statements. The formula is really nice. Then I had purchased three of the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes. I already had Peach Pop, which was the fourth original shade, so I decided to get the other three. And the first one I have is Ginger Pop, which is so stunning. This is a holy grail blush of mine. I always reach for this in the fall, so definitely recommend that. Then I have the shade Berry Pop, which is a really nice fuchsia. And I have plum pop which is a lighter brighter pink so these two i don't wear a ton i have tried and the formula is great but i just don't love these colors of pink on me so i actually just gave these to my mom and my sister to try out the formula because i love this formula it is one of the best blush formulas ever so these blushes do look matte in the pan but on the skin they have a slight sheen to them so whether you have dry skin you have wrinkles you have oily skin you have acne these blushes will look good on you these are also very buildable you can apply them sheer or you can build them up to be really pigmented and intense these are very versatile great for a ton of different skin tones and they just released eight new shades so now there are shades for every skin tone so Definitely recommend you guys check out these Clinique Cheek Pops. They are an incredible, incredible blush line that would work for everyone. Now moving on to quite a few nail polishes. First, I have three from Zoya. And this is when Zoya was doing that promotion of get three nail polishes for free if you pay for shipping. And I think shipping used to be $12. Now it went up to $15, which sucks, but it is still a good deal. So I did take advantage of that and pick up three polishes. The first one I have is blue, spelled B-L-U, which is a beautiful baby's blue shade and this is opaque in two coats it is really hard to find pastel polishes that are opaque so Zoya definitely knocks it out of the park again with this shade Neely it is a light white tone green which again opaque in two coats and very long lasting then we have my most favorite one that I purchased, which is Zoya's Wendy, which is a pink coral. This is one of my holy grail nail polishes, opaque in two coats. I love Zoya's formula. They have yet to disappoint me. Their creams are impeccable, opaque in two coats and long lasting. So my next polish I actually found at Nordstrom Rack. This is a polish I had been looking for for months and months and months. So when I found it in the store, I like freaked out. I was so happy. This is Essie Boxer Shorts, which is a beautiful periwinkle blue shade. Um, this one is opaque and two to three coats, which is pretty good for Essie. Essie formulas are definitely not consistent. The next polish I found randomly at a CVS. This is OPI's Fly from the Nicki Minaj collection, which came out in like 2011 or 2012. So this is like crazy old. So I was so surprised to find it and a couple other random OPIs at a CVS, but this is a color I've been wanting for forever, so I was glad to find it. This is a beautiful teal shade. I'm going to be rocking this in the fall time. So my last nail product I had purchased was the Glisten and Glow HK Girl Top Coat. I have used about half of this. 
this is amazing so my nails eat up nail polish like nobody's business nail polish will chip on me terribly within three days but since I started using that top coat I can ha have a manicure last me seven days until I'm ready to take it off and apply a new color this does dry really fast it is a nice thick top coat then I had purchased three things from cherryculture.com the first was a Milani shadow eyes pencil in the shade snowy white which was part of a limited edition collection from a couple years ago that had some purple a white silver things like that and this is a matte white now I do own the NYX Jumbo pencil in milk but that creases on me so bad these Milani pencils are my favorite stick bases because they are super pigmented they do not crease and they last all day I actually have not used this matte white shade which is kind of sad to say I'm a little bit ashamed of that but I know I love the formula of these the matte shades and the shimmer shades are incredible so I am sad that this was a limited edition shade because it would definitely be really really like loved if this was part of their permanent range so the other two items I purchased were from NYX and the first was the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation and it was in the shade number one ivory which I ran out of this is number two nude so number one ivory is the lightest shade with a yellow undertone unfortunately that shade is not sold at Ulta I can only buy it online but I love that powder this does give some nice light medium coverage which I like to apply this on top of my foundation to give me like max coverage this does have a slight sheen to it when you swatch it which really helps it not look flat and cakey on your skin great coverage it does a good job to help mattify me and keep my makeup in place one of my holy grail favorite powders I just wish that the lightest shade was more readily available I think next time Nick's website has a good sale I'm gonna stock up and buy like four or five of those powders so my last cherry culture item is also from NYX. This is the NYX blush and taupe. So I had purchased this years ago and I had almost finished it all. I had huge pan, just some around the edges and then I dropped it on the ground and shattered it. So I did repurchase this of course. This is a beautiful cool tone color. It is nice and pigmented and blendable. I use this to contour in the winter time especially. This is the best contour for fair skin. It also works on light and even light medium. But if you are deeper than that, it is not going to show up on you and it might look a little bit too ashy and the last things I had purchased were six color pop eyeshadows so this is my very first color pop order I had only heard about them from coffee break with Danny and my friend Ami and when Ami raved about them so much and I saw her swatch and review video I knew that I had to try them out so I did buy six of them so I could get the free shipping and I will show you my original six shades the first one I have is get lucky which is an ultra metallic finish I love this one in the winter time with a burgundy lip it is so gorgeous I love the ultra metallic finishes sequin which is a metallic finish this is a beautiful mix between a rose gold and a copper and it does have some silver sparkle in there I do have a tutorial using this one that I will link for you guys so these two are definitely tied for my favorite ColourPop shadows out of all the ones I've owned those are some of my most used then I purchased the shade Liberty which is an ultra metallic silver really intense and beautiful this one actually like fell out of the pan so I just pressed it back in there which was no problem then the next shade I have is I heart this which is a silvery champagne this is actually probably my least favorite color pop shadow and that's because this one is very very chunky and I do have fallout with this and that kind of bothers me I don't like having that glitter fallout it is still a beautiful shade I do still really like it but it would be my least favorite out of all of my color pop shadows so I had purchased those four metallics and then these two bright shades the first one is animal which is a pressed pigment this is a neon coral with an intense gold flash to it the last shade I have is Ibiza and this this is a pearlized finish this is a beautiful turquoise shade with some silver and gold shimmer throughout it but this doesn't have any chunky glitters it is nice finely milled shimmer so I love that one as well definitely love this one especially to wear on the summertime on my lower lash line so I love Colourpop shadows I have a ton of them in my collection and these are my original six that really fueled my love for my Colourpop shadows and the brand as a whole so guys that was my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 12 I'm sorry it was so long but I had a ton of products to review for you guys so if you have tried any of these please let me know your thoughts in a comment down below thank you so much for watching please rate comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon bye guys